This is Jervis Bay on the south coast of New South Wales. It's popular with holiday makers, divers and sharks. You get lots of different types of sharks, such as Port Jackson sharks, crested horn sharks, great whites, but we actually don't know a lot about the different species that inhabit this bay. We don't think of sharks as social creatures, but in fact, we're discovering that many are. And that's what these scientists are here to study. They're investigating the social dynamics of the incredibly cute Port Jackson shark. And they're heading out to catch a few now. What we want to say at the end of our research is whether the Port Jacksons are actively preferring to hang out with particular individuals and why they're choosing these individuals. During the late winter and early spring, Port Jackson sharks enter Jervis Bay and gather to form aggregations in the shallow reefs, kelp and seagrass beds. Well, we don't know how important these aggregations are to their um, mating and to their feeding, and so we really need to start looking into these reasons. It's from these aggregation sites that Joe and Nathan find their study subjects. I'm getting the chance to handle one of these cute little critters with volunteer Daniel. Of course, one of the big attractions of working with Port Jacksons is they're harmless. They show very little stress response to capture and handling as well. The Port Jackson shark is actually an excellent model species and we take a lot of measurements that you can't take on other, more harder to work with sharks. So Nathan, these are both males. Are they all males out there? They're not all males. We do get some females occasionally, but being so early on in the season, there's a vast majority of males out there. Clasp length is 17 centimetres. Clasp length? Is this very much in these sharks, the size matter to a Port Jackson? We don't actually know whether a size matters. This is essentially to determine whether it's sexually mature or not. You've got two of those things. Impressive. <laughs> Despite the Port Jacksons being easy to catch and handle, it's still a challenge to observe their behaviour in the wild. But new technology is making this easier. Tagging selected subjects with acoustic transmitters allows the researchers to track their movements and interactions to find out who is hanging out with whom. The transmitter is inserted into the shark's stomach and emits a unique identifying signal. You know, you just need to make a small two and a half centimetre incision to mm -hmm. pop the tag into his stomach cavity. So that'll just float around between its organs? Yep. The signal is picked up by different types of proximity receivers. Located around the bay and along the coastline are acoustic listening stations with a range of 300 metres. They detect large-scale movements. But it's a very new type of receiver attached to the shark's dorsal fin that's providing novel insight into who the sharks are associating with. They let us look at the interactions within four metres of each other, so we can really get a good idea of who is interacting with who and for how long these interactions are remaining constant. So how long will this tag stay on the shark for? For approximately two months. OK. And then we have to take them off to download them to receive the data. So you've got to retrieve this shark. You've got to go and catch it to get we that tag back. We have to go back. and recatch this shark. Yep. Gotcha. Applying social network analysis to data collected last year, Nathan is already getting a picture of the Port Jackson's social diary. We have 10 females and 10 males. The size of each square represents the size of the individual. What the lines tell us in between each of these squares is the strength of those associations. So the thicker the line, the more frequently those two sharks interacted with each other. When we run our analysis, that tells us that these particular sharks were hanging out in a non-random fashion. They were choosing to be with those particular individuals. And they found that they were forming these associations over a period of time. What this means is that their relationships are stable, so it's kind of as if they have their own group of friends. The data they're collecting this year will be genetically analysed to see whether the associating sharks are related. Genetic sample 194. 
They're also hoping to learn more about how long the interactions or friendships last. We don't know at the moment whether they last for just one season or whether they can last for multiple seasons or even throughout the lives of the Port Jackson Sharks. One of the things that hopefully we can do is identify key individuals in the population. And then if you remove those key individuals, the population could potentially fall apart. And if that turns out to be true, that's precisely what this research might one day help to prevent. We can aim our management and aim our conservation efforts towards protecting this particular habitat or these particular locations or even particular individuals. See you little guy, I'll make some friends. Thank you.